So the first steps have been officially made in connecting the handler and her units into being more than just officer and comrade, so to speak, right? Now, this is a really interesting dynamic between a group of people who have literally been treated less than machines. They're given machines to operate that are paper thin and seriously a knife can cut out a piece of the metal in order to carve a name to remember your fallen comrades. And you have a girl who has lived and been brainwashed by a republic that has taught her that things are simple, that you're not supposed to view people as human, and she has her own beliefs and she wants to break away from it. A father who took her and showed her the truth about history. And for someone who has no support and no way of changing anything, the most she can do is to try to be friends with these people, right? Because one person can't change the world. To have the freak out last week makes total sense. I mean, for them, she is just another one of the pigs in the empire, who is kind of fun to have around once in a while to kill some time. But most of them, I assumed, probably would understand that her alone isn't enough to change the system. And in this episode, we get a kind of, like, makeup. It's not anything extreme, it's more of Lena understands that she made a mistake. There was at no point she asked them their names. And in doing so, it treated them like they weren't human, even though she was preaching that she wants to view them as human. She's not perfect. She's never had the ability to truly connect with the 86, right? And most of them are in agreement that it's not her fault. I mean, Shin himself is saying it's ridiculous to think that you could change anything, and most of us don't feel the same way that Theo freaked out. However, she wants to make it up and she wants to improve their relationship. And you get a variety of opinions and conversations some saying, you should quit, we don't think you're fit for this, but if you want to kill time, absolutely you can continue to do so. However, we think you're a bit of a hypocrite. We think that you have these beliefs that are never going to change, and as long as you're in those walls, we can never look at you as an equal, right? And she is firmly just kind of wearing that sin on her shoulders. That yeah, as she gets to live comfortably behind walls that are safe, the people that she's supposed to care for, or wants to care for, are being treated as mindless fodder, right? And to have characters like Theo as an example, someone who's very pissed off, who isn't in any way really like wanting to attack her, it's just more of wanting to attack the situation. And even though he pretty much believes what he said last week, he said it in a way that makes him feel bad given the original captain and how it was very similar to that of Lena who fought on the battlefield, just she hasn't, right? and how even after all the hate he had, this person died with them on the battlefield. And it feels like that's how they are, is that unless you're fighting alongside us, we can't ever have a chance at looking at you equal. Some may have a stronger or weaker opinion that way, but it's very interesting because neither side is right or wrong, right? I mean, if you're on the 86 side, absolutely you'd feel that way. And I feel like the whole purpose is that, like, over time, some of them will grow to trust in her and believe in her more, and then others will probably stick to their guns and maybe die by those thoughts, right? But I'm happy to see her, like, just understand, like, even in the face of, say, her best friend saying, it would be nice if we could change things, but this is how it is. One person can't change anything, stop being their handler, come to the lab. The uncle saying, your father was a great man, a good man, but he was a fool and I don't want you to be a fool either, right? So this is a world that even her closest allies and family and friends will not encourage or aid her in wanting to change the system. So when she goes to a classroom to try to show the truth, there's nothing she can do. I've seen a lot of people like verbally attack Lena for being a character who wants to change but isn't perfect. I mean, she grew up in a world that literally indoctrinated her to the point of being racist, right? If she's trying to break away from that and try to treat them as human and is going to make plenty of mistakes along the way. And I think the purpose of this episode is to show that, you know, the 86 aren't stupid. They understand that a single girl who is talking like she's this saint isn't going to be their saving grace. She can't change the entire system, right? Nor should they expect it. But they also are starting to maybe understand that, you know, as much as she has a saint-like presence, it seems that it's not an act, she's just stupid. <laughs> and that's kind of one of the pieces of dialogue. You're an idiot. You firmly believe that, you know, things can hopefully get better for us, but I mean, at this point, send us the maps. That will help us. But we view you as an idiot, but maybe not as this righteous symbol as we once assumed, right? There's this general progression being made, and rather than what you would typically see in a show like this, 
Thea would be like, oh man, I feel bad, and you'd make up, and then consider their handler a friend. No, a majority of them were just simply kind of pleasantly surprised. They're like, oh, our captain already gave you our names, and you want to hear it from us itself, because it's our name. And I think that's a nice little show that even if they aren't friends, even if they aren't buddy-buddy and they're not equals, there's a bit more connection there than when we left off over last week and even the week before, right? So it's nice to see that growth and how tightly written it is. It feels like if you were an 86, if you were grown up in a world where you have 500 tags in a box, right, of all the fallen comrades that you have to hold on to their sins, hold on to their deaths, and you have this very wide array of people who most don't live past a year's time, and you have this girl who's very positive saying she wants to treat you as humans, but never asks you your names. It's understandable why you would think she's lying, or she's playing some game, or she's just trying to make herself feel good. But we've seen it from her perspective. There is not a single ounce of her wanting to feel better about herself. It's that she wants to help them, but doesn't know what to do and makes mistakes along the way. Both sides are so elegantly written, and it feels like someone who understands that this isn't a solution overnight, and more than likely there will never be a solution, which is even more realistic given the circumstance, right? Unless Lena is able to convince a lot of people to help protest against this, there's no way to even hopefully change things. And even if she could, most of these characters probably won't get to see those changes because the war be done, maybe they'll destroy them after the war is said and done, or maybe the war will just continue, right? There are so many painful aspects about the writing here, but it feels so good to see a cast of characters this varied, who have, at surface level, you'd say, I know exactly how that trope's gonna play out, and you get this really interesting emotional sequence where most characters come out saying, we think you're an idiot, but we'll talk with you, but maybe you're not as morally righteous as we once thought, so we'll see where this conversation goes, but just understand, as long as you're behind those walls, we'll never view you as an equal. Shin, I think, is still one of the most interesting aspects about the show, given his leadership and how he very much has a type of comedy that you don't see too often, like when she's crying and like saying, I want to know the names, I want to make it up to them, he just connects them. I don't think he was trying to make a joke, I don't think he was trying to crack a laugh there, but I mean, it was a naturally funny sequence watching her kind of just be pushed in, and I think it goes to show, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of interesting ups and downs with these characters and their relationships together, and it'll be interesting to see how the next death will impact the group, because the first death, we had Theo outbursting, right, and Lena just crying, what will the next death look like, because we know we're getting more, I mean, this show, there's no way in hell we're not going to see more characters die upon die upon die, right? So it'll be very interesting to see how their relationships will continue to brew, and how Lena will try to continue to improve their relationship while also hopefully trying to change the Republic side, even though the 86 understand there's no way she can do it. She's the type of character who will continue to try to find ways in her own time, right? Amazing episode, definitely feels like we're getting better week after week. The emotional writing is tightly written, and it feels like no one is being an anime character. They're being realistic for their situations, whether it's a girl trying to change a system that's impossible to change, understanding now that she has made mistakes and has been shitty in certain senses, wanting to improve, and a group of people who have been treated less than animals, understanding that, you know, this is just a girl who probably wants to feel better about herself, and slowly the cracks are trying to show that maybe there's a bit more, but it doesn't change the fact that they're two different people with two very different lives, and I mean, a scene where people are eating pudding talking about the lives of others, I mean, it's a night and day to what the 86 have to live for, right? Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below, your theories, your speculations, whatever you think, let me know. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you have any new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.